Alright, that was a song that we used to sing when I was a kid in a summer camp. Now go figure why I'm doing that at the beginning of a calculus video. Who knows? Okay, so what are we going to do in this video? So we will study what the first order and second order derivatives of a function have to say about its behavior. All right, so we already know that local min or max of a function can only occur at its critical points, but we do not know yet how to answer the converse question. Namely, how can we determine whether a critical point is a local max or min of a function? So this is what we're going to study in this video, and in fact, in doing so, we're going to study a slightly more general question, which is the following. What do the derivatives f prime and f double prime have to say about the behavior of a function f? All right, so let's start with f prime. What does it have to say about the function f? Well, first, if f prime is positive, what it means is that the tangent line has positive slope, so it is something that looks like this. And what it means for the function that has such a tangent line is that the function will be increasing. So whenever the derivative is positive, the function is increasing. And similarly, if the derivative is negative, then the tangent line has negative slope, which means that the function will be decreasing. All right, so we end up with a statement which is called the increasing-decreasing test, which says that uh, over every interval where the, func the derivative is positive, then the function is increasing, and over the intervals where the derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. That's a pretty straightforward statement, but to be rigorous, we should prove that statement. Uh, it follows directly from the mean value theorem, but I leave the proof as an exercise. One of the direct applications of the increasing-decreasing test is that it gives us a way of determining whether a critical number of a function is a local max or min. So let's start with a local max. So function has a max here. What does it mean to have a local max here? Well, on one side the function is increasing, and on the other side it is decreasing. That's what is going on at a max. So in other words, the tangent lines here have positive slope, so the derivative is positive. Here it is zero at the max, and then it becomes negative on the other side. And similarly for min, we get the opposite behavior. So it is negative on the left hand side, goes to zero, and then becomes positive on the other side. So that uh, gives us what's called the first derivative test. So if you have a critical number c of a function f, then if, prime, if f prime changes from positive to negative at c, then we know that f has a local max at c. If it changes from negative to positive, then f has a local min. And if it does not change sign at c, then f has no, no local uh, min or max at this point. So an example here would be a function like this. So this point here has zero derivative, but this is not a local min or max, and we see that in fact the tangent line here has positive slope on both sides of the critical points. All right, so let me now work through an example. So suppose that I'm given the function 2x cubed plus 3x squared, and I want to find where it's increasing and decreasing, and it's local min and max. So the easiest will be to construct a table of regions of positivity and negativity for the derivative, which tells us where the function is increasing and decreasing, and then use the first derivative test to find the local min and max. All right, so first the domain of the function here is all real numbers, because it's a polynomial, so there's no problem with that. Now we calculate the derivative to get the critical numbers. So here I get 6x squared plus 6x, which is the same as 6x times x plus 1. And then I get that there are two critical numbers, which are zeros of the derivative, and they're at x equals to 0 and x equals to minus 1. All right, so I'm going to construct a table of regions positivity and negativity for f prime. So I put f prime here and then the consequence for f here. So there's like there's three distinct regions in this case, x being less than minus 1, now x equals to minus 1 is a critical point. Then I have x between minus 1 and 0. x equals to 0 is another critical point. Finally, I have x positive. All right, and what I want to find now is, is whether f prime is positive or negative over each of those intervals. Well, first I know that this is 0 at these two critical points. Now if I look at x being less than minus 1, so if I take my expression here, x will be negative and x plus 1 will also be negative, so I get negative times negative, which gives me something positive. So f prime will be positive over that interval. 
what does it imply for f? It implies that the function is increasing. So I'm going to put a little arrow here to show that the function itself is increasing. All right, now what about x between minus 1 and 0? Well, in this case, the x factor is negative, but x plus 1 is positive. So the whole thing here will be negative times positive, which is negative. So I get a minus sign for the derivative, which tells me that the function is decreasing. And finally, if x is positive, the whole thing is positive. So the derivative is positive, and the function is increasing. And now you see that it's easy to apply the first derivative test just by looking at the little table. So here I see it's increasing and decreasing, which means that this point here is a local max. And here is decreasing and then increasing, so this point is a local min. All right, but what does the second derivative have to say about f? Well, if the second derivative of f is positive, that means that the slope of the tangent lines is increasing. So the tangent lines will have slope that increases, so it will kind of go like this. And for the function itself, that means that the function will look like this. And we say that the function is concave up because it opens upwards. On the other hand, if the second derivative is negative, that means that the slope of the tangent lines is decreasing, so I'll get something like this, and then the function will open downwards, so we say that it is concave down. So what we conclude is that the second derivative of f uh, says something about concavity of the original function. More precisely, if the over every interval where the, uh, the f double prime is positive, then we conclude that f is concave up, and where f double prime is negative, then f is concave down. And there's an easy way of remembering which is which, because if f double prime is positive, well, it's positive, so this is good, so we're happy, so we smile. While if f double prime is negative, this is not so good, it's negative, we're unhappy, so we don't smile. All right, and uh, just as local max and min can be defined as points where the sign of f prime changes, we also have something special about the points where the sign of f double prime changes. So these are called inflection points. And in terms of concavity, these are the points where the concavity change from either concave up to concave down or the other way around. The second derivative gives us another way of determining whether a critical point is a local min or max. But it only works for critical points that are zeros of the derivative. So the statement is the following. So if the derivative is zero and the second derivative is positive, then f must have a local min at that critical point, because the second derivative is positive, so we're happy, so it goes like a min. On the other hand, if the first derivative is zero and the second derivative is negative, then it must have a local max, because we're unhappy. But the second derivative test may fail sometimes, so if you get that the first derivative and, and the second derivatives are both zero, then you can't conclude anything. You do not know whether it's a local max or a local min or neither. It could be anything. So in that case, you need to use the first derivative test to figure out whether it's a local min or max. All right, so let me put that into practice with a second example. So I'm given the function x to the fourth power minus 4x cubed, and I want to study its concavity, its inflection points, and I will also study its local min and max. But let me start with concavity. So to do that, I need to calculate the second order derivative. So I'll start with f prime, which in this case is 4x cubed minus 12x squared, and that then f double prime will be 12x squared minus 24x, which is the same as 12x times x minus 2. All right, so to study concavity, I'll just write down a table, construct a table like I did before, but now for f double prime instead of f prime. So I'll build my table, my sign of f double prime here and what it implies for f, and I have three different regions here because there's two zeros for f double prime, so x equals to zero and x equals two. So I'll have the region where x is less than zero, then I have at x equals to zero, f double prime is zero, then I have the region between zero and two, then at x equals two, f double prime is zero, and then for x greater than two. All right, and then I can fill in the signs and what it implies from concavity of f. So if, s, if x is negative, then x is negative here, and x minus 2 is also negative, so I get negative times negative, which means that f double prime is positive. That means we're happy, so f is concave up. On the other hand, if x is between 0 and 2, then x is positive, but x minus 2 is negative, so f double prime is negative, we're unhappy, concave down. And if x is greater than 2, then I get positive times positive, so everything is positive, 
concave up. And then we see that there are in fact two inflection points here because there's two points where concavity changes, goes from concave up to concave down, and here from concave down to concave up. So these are the two inflection points of my function. All right, so now what about the min, the local min and max? So if I go back to f prime, I, I can rewrite that as 4x squared times x minus 3, which tells me that there are two critical numbers for this function, which are zeros of the derivative, so these are at x equals to 0 and x equals to 3. Now to determine whether these are local min or max, I could try to use the second derivative test, which means I want to evaluate the second derivative at these critical numbers. So I'll do that first for x equals to 0. So I have double prime of 0, just substituting in here I'll get 0, which means that I can't conclude anything from the second derivative test, because this could be anything, it could be a local min, a local max, or neither of them. All right, for the second critical point, I get that f double prime of 3 will be equal to 12 times 3 times 3 minus 1. Now, whatever that number is, doesn't matter, but we know it's positive, which means that we're happy, so it goes like this, concave up, so this is a local min. We can conclude this directly, from the, from the second derivative test. But we still don't know about zero, so to actually conclude anything about zero, we need to go to the first derivative test, which means that we need to construct a table, but now for the first derivative. So again, we have three regions, because there's two critical numbers, so x less than zero, x equals to zero, where the derivative is zero, then x between zero and three, x equals to three, and then x greater than three, and then looking at the sign of the first derivative, if x is negative, this is positive, this is negative, so I get negative, so the function is decreasing. If x is between 0 and 3, x squared is positive, but this is still negative, so the function is still decreasing. Well, if x is greater than 3, then everything is positive, so the function is increasing. So from the first derivative test, well, I conclude that this is a local min, which I already knew because I got that from the second derivative test. But now I can conclude that this is not a local extrema because the function is decreasing on both sides of the critical point. All right, so with that, we could pretty much sketch the whole function, but we'll come back to that. But just to give you an idea of what the function in this case looks like, so it will go like something like this. So this would be the local min, so that's at the point 3, and then the function is whatever it is at this point, I think it's minus 27. Now here at the point x equals to 2, and then the value of the function at this point is minus 16, this is an inflection point. This would be a local min, as we just calculated. And there's another inflection point where concavity changes which is at the origin, so that's another inflection point here, which turns out not to be a local extremum, even though the horizontal line, the tangent line here, is horizontal.